Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me on the podcast this week is Abigail Sykes. Abigail is a PhD candidate in the Machado Lab at North Carolina State University. Abigail, thank you very much for coming back on the podcast. For anybody that didn't catch the first episode, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, let us know what you're doing there at the, the Machado Lab um, and a little bit about yourself. Okay, wonderful. Um, yes, thank you very much for inviting me back on. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, I'm a PhD candidate and uh, in the Machado lab where we work mainly on disease preparedness. And so my research has focused primarily on uh, modeling African swine fever spread in the US in the event that a uh, introduction does happen. So to recap the model that we have created so far, this is a transmission model of ASF in the southeast of the US. Um, and it models the spread of ASF through animal movements, vehicle movements, and also uh, spatial associated transmission. So this will be movements of equipment, people, uh, any wildlife mechanical transmission or wild boar uh, or feral swine um, that may occur with ASF. And it's really important that we are able to do this because it gives us an in, a way to test the effectiveness of the control actions that are currently in the pipeline to be used in the event of an ASF outbreak. So this includes um, movement restrictions and depopulation, uh, immediate movement standstills, the uh, contact tracing from infected farms, and also the implementation of control areas and surveillance zones, which include testing and um, movement permits. So we've got lots of different um, activities that you mentioned, all motivated towards elimination, um, and I should say eradication of ASF out of the country. Um, I know you've done some work, Abigail, since the first time we talked to update your model. And certainly, um, one would think the more resources we throw at this, the faster that eradication process will happen. But your modeling hopefully tells us how to efficiently use those resources, how to efficiently apply those actions. So talk to us a little bit about what you've learned as you've updated the model. When you've put different activities in, how have you seen those timelines change, good or bad? Um, so we've been looking at the moment to putting more nuance of the control actions and allowing for uh, resource limits and other um, other more nuanced, accounting for more nuances in um, the dynamics of the model. So with the elimination, while we're currently looking into that, and so far we're seeing not necessarily any, we haven't, got the results at the moment for, uh, I guess, a time frame from elimination, apart from the fact that from our previous model, we ran for 140 days. And it seems that under those control actions, it's not quite capable of eliminating ASF. Um, so we will be looking to see, as you said, if we throw everything at it, how quickly can we get it eliminated? We'll look at three months, six months, nine months, and a year. Um, but also, it may be that if we throw everything at it, you know, maybe we don't have to throw everything at it. Maybe there's, you know, we only have to increase a certain, certain control actions, and they'll have more of an impact than others. So from the results that we've had so far, it does seem that control actions that are based on finding the infected farms, so the contact tracing and the testing that occurs in the control areas and the surveillance zones, has a much bigger impact on bringing down um, the number of cases compared to control actions like depopulation and movement standstills that just you know, identify farms that, oh, sorry, get rid of farms that are infected or stop the movement because in a movement standstill, 
you're just stopping it from immediately transmitting. But afterwards, if they haven't been identified, they're still going to transmit again. So uh, that's currently what we're looking at. Um, and hopefully we will be able to give an indication of what would be required and allow you know, the organizations that are involved in actual implementation determine if that's really a feasible thing that they can achieve. Yeah. As you've made updates to your model, Abigail, are, are you just trying to tweak the actions in the model that you think are most valuable to speed up the, the eradication yeah. process? Or are you going in to um, things like depopulation efforts, things like testing intensity and saying, all right, well, we heard from uh, pork industry stakeholders that we could test between 50 and 100 percent of the farms. I'm making something up. And so if I toggle the 50 percent to 100 percent, you know, how does that change? How are you guys looking at, at the updates on the model? Are you doing it from a purely let's see how fast we can go, even if I'm using resources maybe that don't exist today? Or are you saying, well, I'm looking at all the resources that are available and I'm only considering the practical things I know we could do tomorrow to eliminate it and then just seeing what the outcomes will be? Yeah, so the updates that we're making to the actions are based on feedback that we've had from primarily the USDA in whether kind of work, working and discussing with them about what would the nuances of what would happen in an ASF outbreak so that we can accurately reflect the dynamics that would occur. As for the elimination scenarios, we are hoping to toggle like how many, um, you know, how many farms can be depopulated today, uh, each day, sorry. Uh, and how many farms can be tested in a day. And it will, primarily focus first on the actions that we've seen have a big impact when we've added them, but we will then extend it out to others. So, you know, if we toggle those and it's not really getting us quite to the elimination period that we want, then we might look into the other ones as well. And what happens if we do this instead of that and, you know, increase the number, you know, increase the length of a control zone instead of, um, increasing the movement standstill and just kind of see what combination is the best for getting it under that under control in that time frame. What um, what sort of uh, prevalence or number of infected sites are you starting with in your model? Are you assuming we catch it really early? Are you assuming oh it's all over by the time we catch it? Or do you have the ability to look either way? So in our model, we're actually starting from the introduction of the of ASF into the country. So it would be starting just at one farm, assuming some kind of introduction event. And we're allowing our model to run through it, you know, that, uh, that infection building and transmitting to other farms. So when the controls actually get implemented, we'll change throughout the uh, with each simulation. So if it gets started at a farm that has good, very good surveillance, it may, the it might be caught earlier and the control action started earlier. But if it's in a farm or production type that maybe the surveillance isn't quite as effective, um, then it may, it may be that the, it spreads further before we even realize we have an infection. So we're, it's, quite varied and dynamic, I guess. At Essential Ag, pork production is our life. We understand the real world challenges producers face, and that is why we strive to bring research-driven solutions to the industry. The team at Essential Ag is working hard every day to find and deliver innovative technologies to you because we are passionate about solving your problems. Abigail, thank you so much for coming back onto the podcast. Thank you very much for having me on it. To our audience, thank you very much from uh, Clayton Johnson and Abigail Sykes. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about ASF. Thanks and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at 
W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.